20 matchup in South Carolina, the Miami Hurricanes and the Clemson Tigers, all part of the ACC on ESPN. Glad to have you with us here today, my cousins and the Virginia legend, Corey Alexander. We got a well-rested Miami team not having played since a win at home against Florida State on Sunday. Meanwhile, for Clemson, quick turnaround from a very difficult Thursday night game at NC State. Absolutely, and having their students back in section has, in section has to be good for Clemson. They're going to need that energy because I'm sure Brad Brownell is concerned about his team having a hangover after a very tough loss on Thursday night in Raleigh against NC State. It was a loud crowd from the start at PNC Arena. NC State double-digit lead dwindled away with some head-scratching plays at the end. And a costly turnover gives Clemson the opportunity. Gabe DeVoe in the corner gets fouled shooting a three-pointer, made the first two free throws, and then after a timeout icing him by Kevin Keats, he misses the third, giving the Wolf Pack the one-point win. DeVoe, the senior in his first year as a full-time starter, Finished with 12 points, 10 rebounds, but I'll hope for a complete effort that includes a win here this afternoon. Students are back, about 9,000 seats in this arena, and they look to just about all be full. A top 20 matchup of two of the nation's best defensive teams. Clemson 3-1 and one of the ACC, Miami at 2-1, and one, and the opening tip belongs to the point guard, Shelton Mitchell for Clemson. Starting five for the Tigers, one of just a handful in the country where everybody's averaging at least 10 a game, and it's a great start with a three-pointer from DeVoe. And Mike, that was by design, Brad Brownell making sure that his senior did not have the hangover from missing that free throw on Thursday night runs his first set for Gabe DeVoe getting him a good look DeVoe knocking down the three and you see the defensive energy up for Clemson on their first defensive possession as well here's Thomas who had limited minutes on Thursday in the first half just three Picking up a couple of early fouls, a big proponent component of what they do in the low post as he drives and drops it off short. And this is almost like a scripted beginning to a football game. There were two set plays called by Brad Brown. Now, how he wanted to establish the beginning of this game. First gave the ball, then he wanted to get Elijah Thomas an opportunity inside. They got it. Thomas unable to finish, but he knows how important it is for his big man to have an impact in this game. Seven to shoot. Newton from 15 feet outside for Brown. His only options are three. And it's an offensive rebound, Hewell. Lawrence drives, delivers, and will go to the line. Nice take by Amp Lawrence. Finding his way to the rim, but the offensive rebound by Hewell gives Miami a second chance opportunity. And Lawrence taking advantage of it. And that play is big for a number of reasons. One, Lawrence scores, gets the opportunity for the three-point play. But probably even bigger than that, Elijah Thomas picks up that first foul already with the less than a minute and a half played in this game and is already headed to the bench as Mark Donnell comes in to spell the big fellas. Now it's no knock on Donnell, but certainly not the same score that Thomas is. Who's the team's leader at 62% from the floor. But Donnell did have a nice game on Thursday. 13 points off the bench. He did, but I talked to Chris Caputo and Jamal Brunt, assistant coaches from Miami before the game, and one of their focuses was to get Thomas off the floor because they say clearly Clemson is a different team when he's out of the lineup and having to watch in foul trouble. Walker with a spin move, going to work on Reed. Lonnie Walker inserted into the starting lineup last Sunday against Florida State. And got off to a great start in that game, but didn't play much. Was replaced by DJ Vasilovic in the second half because Vasilovic was playing very well. So Lonnie Walker aggressive to start this one off. I'm sure he wants to see more action in this one. Yeah, he only played 15 minutes against the Knowles on Sunday. Traveling is the call, and it's going the other way. And a turnover by Clemson, which was the issue for them Thursday night in Raleigh against the Wolfpack. 17 turnovers in the loss. Brad Brownell, 138 wins here at Clemson. His next one 
Launches him out of a tie for third place with Oliver Purnell. And already the ACC high 62 ACC wins, which surpassed Cliff Ellis as we see Huell getting out on the court and using his ability to drive the basketball. Jim Laranega told me last week that Dewan Huell, they had to pick some one thing that they wanted him to be good at, and that was playing with his back to the basket early in the year, and he did that. So they start trying to add to his package, and he said if you see him driving the basketball, it may not be perfect, but it's something we want him to add into his game, and we saw a great example of it on that last play. Well, they've gotten the ball inside. 7-0 run with all those field goals coming in the paint for the Hurricanes. So far, it's just the DeVoe three for Clemson. Danell to the basket, trying to go up between two defenders, and he draws the foul between Walker and Huell. And it's the first on Walker, the freshman from Reading, Pennsylvania, and the former ESPN 100 player, ranked number 13 in the incoming freshman class. For fans of basketball, he's a guy we've got to enjoy while he's in the college game. Because it won't be long. And I tell you what, if you get an opportunity to see him on a fast break, it is pure enjoyment because he's one of the best athletes that you're going to see in college basketball and loves to showcase his athletic ability on the break. Donnell's got it. His reward is a seat on the bench. Amir Sims, the freshman, into the game for Clemson. And Amir Sims, the freshman, has gotten off to it. Got off to a really good start this season. Hasn't seen as much time in the ACC, but with Thomas being in foul trouble, Brad Brownell is going to use Sims more at the center position, and his ability to guard on the floor, I think, gives him a better chance of defending Huell, especially when he puts the ball on the floor trying to get to the rim. Well, they double down on him. Reed causing some trouble. It's Walker straight away. His three-pointer is good. Miami's hit their last four from the floor. Oh, and by the way, we talked about Walker's athleticism. He can do that, too. Shooting the three is a bonus for Lonnie Walker. Coming up on the defensive end as well, denying Duvall. Down from deep. <laughs> Newton had two defenders. He will make some pay as Grantham comes over late and picks up his first foul. Two point game. Exactly four minutes gone here at Club City. Alexander, glad to have you with us. We're a full house at Little John Coliseum today for a Miami squad that's 13 and 2. Clemson 14 and 2, suffering its first loss in the ACC on Thursday night by one point against NC State. Dewan Hewell, the sophomore from Miami, at the line to shoot two, a 70% free throw shooter. He's got them both. It's the Hurricanes by four. And that's an area of improvement for Miami. They're shooting 75% from the free throw line during ACC play. This is a team that struggled mightily in the non-conference from the line, even though they got off to a 10-0 start. That was the one block eye on that resume. Mitchell from the corner, the third triple of the afternoon for the Tigers. And Shelton Mitchell actually had a quiet game on Thursday, so that's a welcome sign for Brad Brownell to see his point guard get it started off knocking down a three. He was on the floor at 35 minutes, only scored seven points. Brown five to shoot. Ewell outside of his range, puts it on the floor. Snared by Reed. Quickly to the rim, nobody at the back 
side. Tigers in front by one. And Marquise Reed off to a great start here at home. Clemson's leading scorer is a very versatile player. Stuffs the stat sheet in pretty much every category and one of the best defenders on this Clemson lineup. Newton gets into the lane, sends it off Fuel. Only three to shoot. Newton penetrates, lays it in. Now, I believe the officials are actually going to see that replay to see if... And they're going to take a look. If Newton got that out of his hands before the shot clock goes off. That was pretty close. But I know for Clemson, defending for 29 and a half seconds to give up that opportunity, Brad Brownell can't be happy about that. Jaquan Newton loves the score, so he's hoping that one counts, <laughs> as it will. Good bucket for Newton, driving to the rim. It's about as close as it gets. You see the basketball out of his hands before the shot clock shows zero, but it's pretty close there. Great call by our officiating staff. And good awareness from Shelton Mitchell, too. You know, you could say, hey, he could step in there, try and take a charge, but he wasn't going to be able to get out of the restricted area. So his best bet was just to fly by. And for him to pick up a silly foul is not beneficial because Nothing against the backup point guards for Clemson, but they're not Shelton Mitchell. This team runs so much better when he's on the court. And he has to be very cautious when he picks up fouls. Foul is on to Miami's Lonnie Walker. That's his second in the first six minutes. So his time is going to be diminished for the second straight game as DJ Vasilovic comes onto the floor, the sophomore from Australia. Well, that's a freedom of movement foul there. Lonnie Walker just impeding the progress of Gabe DeVoe trying to cut across the lane. David Scar going to enter the game now for Dante Grantham. And, you know, Scar will get a couple minutes here and there, but Grantham is a guy that Clemson needs to have on the floor and have him being aggressive the entire time he's out there because he's so important to what the success of this team. We talked about Reed and his ability to defend. That's a great defensive effort there by Gabe DeVoe. Stopping Bruce Brown, and when he gets downhill, he's a handful to try to guard. So give Gabe the ball a lot of credit right there for keeping Brown out of the paint. Mitchell pestered by Chris Likes, one of the most excited players in the league. Second chance, no, and on a third try, Mitchell going up to the basket gets fouled. And Jim Laranega talked to us about offensive rebounding and keeping Clemson off the glass. That was a concern of his coming in for his team. Miami has struggled at times defensively. They gave up 21 offensive rebounds to Florida State on Sunday, and it's the point guard, Shelton Mitchell, getting in the mix, coming up with the offensive board and opportunity to give Clemson a lead at the free throw line. Now to 15 14 in favor of Clemson. From overtime in the Big 12 to a top 20 matchup in the ACC after the Trey Young show is done, my cousins Corey Alexander. Glad to welcome you here to Little John Coliseum. In Clemson, South Carolina, it's Miami and Clemson. A one-point game so far. It's been back and forth. The lead has changed hands four times already with a well-rested Miami team coming here, not having played since Sunday. And Clemson 
in its second game in three days following a one-point loss at NC State Thursday night. And another turnover for Clemson. Marquise Reed trying to get out in transition, really didn't have a good handle on that basketball, but had players ahead of him. And it turns into an easy bucket for Miami on the other end. Try from three, no good, out of bounds. And going the other way, hometown crowd doesn't like it. Gabe DeVoe, who missed the free throw that could have tied the game against NC State, started off with a three, and Clemson has been hot from deep. And then Miami went on a 7-0 run after the three from DeVoe. But Clemson coming back with a number of big buckets. Shelton Mitchell with the three. And you see both teams shooting. Miami shooting the ball extremely well from the field right now. The early story for both teams is who's sitting. Right now, it's Lonnie Walker, the standout freshman for Miami, in favor of the three-point shooter, DJ Vasilevich. Good timing on his part. Oh, yeah. It'd and be then, better if he had made the shot. <laughs> <laughs> and then for Clemson, Eli Thomas picked up a foul in the first two minutes, and he went to the bench. The extra pass, one too many. DeVoe's ball is picked off. The Hurricanes run the floor. And Bruce Brown to shoot a pair. Miami by one on the road, trying to take down Clemson. Today's Saturday showcase on ESPN. You brought to you by Five Hour Energy. It's the ACC on ESPN. Miami and Clemson, a one point game. Mike Cousins and Corey Alexander, thanks for being with us. Both teams looking quite spry here in the early going after Miami had a six day layoff. And Clemson, not even 48 hours after their Thursday night game at NC State. And no hangover with us far for Clemson. We thought there could be one after a disappointing loss in Raleigh to the Wolfpack. And you see the turnover got them the opportunity. And then Gabe DeVoe getting fouled on a three-point shot after making the first two free throws. A Kevin Keys timeout ices Gabe DeVoe, who misses the final free throw of three that could have sent the game into overtime. As the... Wolfpack escape with a win, but Clemson getting out to a good start here. The energy is good in the building. Having their students back in session has to help here at Little John, which, like when I was playing in the ACC, this is one of the toughest venues to have to play in. And it certainly sounds like it could be one of those this afternoon with hardly an empty seat in the building. Eli Thomas back into the game, number 14 in white, after picking up an early foul in the first two minutes, a critical part of the post offense for Clemson. I like what Brad Brownell's doing here with Chris Likes guarding Shelton Mitchell and his ability to pressure the basketball, allowing Gabe DeVoe to initiate the offense, but still turns into a turnover. And Likes gets down the floor and delivers immediate results. That's where he's best, is sprinting away from everybody else. And that's what happens normally when there's a turnover, especially if he gets his hands on the basketball. Jim Laranega loves for Chris Likes to be able to go play fast. Did that against Florida State to a tune of 18 points, which earned him an ACC Rookie of the Week honor. And Likes is really stepping up his production in ACC play. When we spoke with Coach Laranega before the game, you got the picture that maybe it wasn't going to be a lot of playing time for Likes today because it, he said he doesn't like him against a defense that packs it in as much as Clemson does. Yeah, but when you have a guy as explosive as Chris Likes, you still want him to have his opportunities in transition and shooting the ball extremely well from three on key. See Likes as he knocks one down. But his ability to score, it's hard to keep him off of the court. He shoots 40% from three, second only to Anthony Lawrence. And DeVoe comes up with a response. His second three from identical spots. And honestly, I mean, just on a personal note, I'm happy to see Gabe DeVoe get off to a good start. We've seen how missing crucial free throws in a scenario like he did on Thursday night has really put players into a funk for a very long time. So good to see him putting it behind him and getting a great start here today. Difficult pass to try and make their likes looking for Hugh. And the Hurricanes 
have Lonnie Walker back on the floor after the timeout. Number four in green with the two fouls. Into the corner, it's Walker for three. Off the long rebound, the lineup for Thomas! Walker penetrates, has it swatted by Grantham. Stark contrast at both ends of the floor. The crowd as loud as it gets at the other end. A little bit more silent here, letting the offense work. Walker pulls it down. And Miami getting out right now when they get their opportunities they want to play in transition But Clemson is important to get back and get their defense set and make Miami take tough shots Like that Dewan Hewitt was more capable of making that shot, but that's much tougher than getting a transition easy basket Grantham catching the Hurricanes in transition and draws the foul and Speaking of transition Marquise Reed with their beautiful find to Elijah Thomas over the top the alley-oop Big bucket for Thomas, getting him off to a start. Went out with one foul early, but you see the energy and the effort that Clemson's giving on the defensive end of the floor. Thomas not wanting to pick up the foul. Grantham coming over to have his teammates back with a big block shot. They're looking to feed him. One-on-one -on -one against Izundu. Right back to him. Four straight for the big man and a 7 nothing run. And you love to see Thomas come back into the game being aggressive and not playing as though he's tentative about getting picking up a foul. And it looked like his confidence took a little bit of a hit. They tried to feed him a couple of straight possessions and the ball bounced away off his hands. Fouls on Newton, the first on the Miami senior tie game. Both teams know the utmost importance of Elijah Thomas for this Clemson team. Miami wants him on the bench, but Clemson loves him on the court. Two versus 12 in the Big 12, Duke and Miami Monday. Marvin Bagley, surprise, surprise, another double-double, his 14th of the year today. He goes for 30 and 11 in Duke's 18 point win over Wake Forest. And you know, through all of that, there's a strong possibility that he may not even be the freshman of the year nationally. Not after Trey Young went off today again with 43 points and 11 rebounds. And you know, if it comes down to it, the Wayman Tisdale Award is going to go to the guy from Oklahoma, considering Wayman Tisdale. Got it done at Oklahoma. The best freshman, you know, probably one of the best freshmen of all time getting it done. So Trey Young may have an inside track on that. Can we just have co-players of the year? I think that would be great. <laughs> I, th I think, well, maybe you give one freshman of the year, the other one player of the year. I because I think right now it's a two-man race between those two players. Brown steps into a three-pointer. Nice box out from Thomas to help start the break. It's Grantham spinning off lights. Using the glass and second effort gives the Tigers the lead. I really love the way that Dante Grantham has approached his senior year at Clemson. And his production has shown it. Not giving up on the play, missing a shot, but of course going back in another offensive rebound. And Jim Laranega bothered every time by that, but loves to see this young man get it done on the offensive end of the floor. As he'll tell you, it's heart over height for a guy who's listed at 5'7", and most assuredly is not 5'7". <laughs> In agreement, but his heart is huge. Oh, around the rim, Grantham, a three-pointer. Mike, the hype between these two teams is how good both of them are defensively. 
But we've seen some pretty good offense here in the first 14 and a half minutes of this first half. Really efficient scoring. Miami at 50% from the floor. Clemson 47%. A lot of dribbling. And a long way for a Newton miss. And that's a tough shot for Newton at six foot two over top of his six foot eight Grantham. Likes in his element. But down one on four. They'll swing it around the end. And a smart play by Chris Likes. Didn't have numbers. Bring it back out, allowing Miami to run offense. But he will be looking to stay aggressive on the offensive end of the floor. Newton against Scara. Bump of the foul on the Valpo transfer. Dante Grantham getting out of transition, unable to finish, but gets the tip in. And then on the next possession, Shelton Mitchell finding Grantham in the corner as he shows off his three-point stroke and a little bit of a home-friendly roll. Would you have imagined early in his career that he'd become the guy you've seen this year? You know, honestly, I did think that he had the potential to do this. You know, a lot of most of his career, he's really been playing out of position, playing at the small forward spot. And not to say that he's not good there, but playing alongside Jerome Blossom game, he didn't have to rebound as much. He didn't have to do the tough things. But now you see him doing those playing at the four position, and he's a matchup problem for opposing teams because of his ability to put the basketball on the floor. That fits right in with what Brad Brownell has said about this team relative to previous years is that the pieces just fit together better. I agree with you wholeheartedly on that and of course agree with Coach Brownell. They do fit well together because they have more shooting on the court. And with them having guys like Marquise Reed, Gabe DeVoe, even Shelton Mitchell knocking down three-pointers, Dante Grantham's ability to handle the basketball and make plays makes all those guys better. And then when you throw in the fact that Elijah Thomas is a strong post presence, now you can play four round one with Grantham having the ability to, to attack and rebound and push the ball out in transition. So I think the pieces do fit very well together. But I think that the fact that they've gotten back to playing Brad Brownell style defense helps this team as well. Number 11 in defensive efficiency for the Ken Palm ratings. Likes turns it over. Tonight at 6 on ESPN, we cap a great day of ACC hoops from the Joyce Center at South Bend, Indiana. Number 20, North Carolina. See if they roll a little bit more with that small lineup against a smaller team. And an injured Notre Dame squad It's going to be streaming live on the ESPN app as well as on ESPN. Well, Luke May and his ability to score is better facing up than he is more of a post presence. So Carolina playing that smaller style really gives them an opportunity to spread the floor and find another way to score on the offensive end. They've had times struggling, of course, Michigan State and Virginia not even scoring 50 points, and that's almost unheard of for Roy Williams' coach teams. But somewhat expected against Virginia. Yeah, well, you get a pass against Virginia. They only allow 53 points a game, best in the country for the Cavaliers who play tomorrow night against the Wolfpack. Yeah, and Miami not far off of that number. They're still under 60 points, a little over 59. So Miami fourth in scoring defense nationally. So you're talking about another one of those very good defensive teams here in the ACC. An unselfish Hurricanes possession ends in Clemson's favor. Tigers four on five. Scarra trying to tip it up and in. And he gets called for the foul. Wow, his second. Tough call. He can't believe it. Neither can Brownell. David Scar still trying to get his first ACC points. Thought he had it here, however, denied by the foul. Welcome back to the ACC on ESPN. Little John Coliseum is the site of a great matchup. Miami and Clemson, a couple of top 20 teams. It was Virginia and Clemson, the lone unbeaten in the ACC until Thursday night. And the Wahoos put that title on the line tomorrow at 6 Eastern right here on the U. And the same team that gave Clemson their first loss in ACC play, Virginia has to play NC State. So Kevin Keats and his team looking to try to knock two consecutive teams from the ranks of the unbeaten in ACC play and also their third straight ranked opponent they'd like to take out. 
it would be four. Well, it would, you're right. It would be their fourth ranked opponent overall, but three, it would be three or three games that they're able to beat right. Virginia because they, they were able to beat Duke, of course, at home, and then Clemson at home. So now they come up against the number three ranked Virginia Cavaliers tomorrow night on ESPNU at 6 p.m., just in case those of you would like to check, check in. Oh, what? Well, you happen to be there. Is that how you know all the details? Well, you know, I do <laughs> what I can do when I can do it. Reed gets called for the foul. That's his first. Speaking of top 25 teams, Miami has knocked off a couple this year. They're 2-0 and against Minnesota and then Florida State on Sunday. And they're looking for their first three-game winning streak against top 25 teams since the 01-02 season. Indiana, Georgetown, and they finished it off with a UConn team that had Karan Butler, Ben Gordon, and Emeka Okafor. Not a bad team. <laughs> that's, that's throwing a couple names out there. There's been one any blackout in this game for Clemson. It's the fact that they have seven turnovers already. We mentioned 17 turnovers against NC State and only their second loss of the year. Their first loss of the year against Temple, they had 18 turnovers. So that's been the one thing that has played the Clemson Tigers in their losses this year is turning the basketball over and not getting shots because you see what can happen when you get shots on the other end, especially for Dante Grantham. Did you all respect his shooting ability? Not enough, because you can't give him. But you know, that's a tough cover for Ewell as well, to be able to actually go out there and guard a guy like Grantham. But that's part of the big lineup for Jim Laranega. And one of the reasons why Anthony Lawrence is now at the scores table, going to check in for Coach L. Because when you play against Dante Grantham, it's very difficult to guard him with a power forward, his ability to put the ball on the floor and shoot the ball from the perimeter. Donnell at the rim, he's got it. Largest lead by either side has been seven points for Miami. The Tigers out in front by four. And we've seen Donnell's confidence grow as well. After a great first half at NC State where he scored 13 points, he's come in and give Clemson a lift in this game as well with Elijah with Thomas on the bench. Newton in disbelief. NBA Sunday special for you on ESPN, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. It's the Blazers and the T-Wolves. You can catch it on the ESPN app as well as on ESPN. Portland, back-to-back -back losses. Meanwhile, Minnesota's hot right now. They've won four straight all at home, and they keep home floor for this one. Minnesota and hot. Hmm. I'm not sure if you can put those two <laughs> words in the same sentence. That's the guy who doesn't plan on moving out of the South at any point in the morning. No, I can remember playing in those games and getting off the plane at 2 in the morning on the back-to-back -back headed to Minnesota. And there was nothing hot about that. Brown eyes up. He's looking at the rim. And with good reason. And that's where Brad Brownell wants to keep Miami out of transition. Miami at times has struggle scoring the basketball in half-court sets so you can't allow them to get out in transition to get easy baskets but Bruce Brown is, is a hard to handle when he gets a full head of steam the drop off late whistle comes as Brown with the bump on Donnell from the backside. Coming up at the half, we'll give you a look around the early action in college basketball as well as the ACC no doubt you'll see some highlights from Oklahoma's overtime win against TCU as Trey Young dropped 43 points on the Horned Frogs. Oh, and it was also a double-double for him. It wasn't just a point. He actually had 11 rebounds in this game. And at last check, I, I did not see the final stats. This was late in overtime. I saw seven assists. Slacker. <laughs> <laughs> what was he doing out there today? Clemson fortunate to be able to get to the free throw line on this possession. Marquise Reed 
went a little bit early. Still 8.6 seconds remaining in the half. Brad Brownell going to, I'm sorry, Jim Bernay going to take the time out to talk over the scheme. A basket will be important for Miami heading into halftime. Number 18, number 19, a four-point game. Clemson out in front, looking for win number 15 of the year. After last year, winning only 17 games in total. And lost a lot of close games last season. Tigers on the hunt for a stop. Floater, short, and that's the end of the first half. Tigers are perfect when leading at the break. Balanced scoring as they've done all year. Coming up after the break, Adnan, Seth Greenberg, Alfonso Ellis. Our halftime report. Welcome back to the Saturday Showcase presented by Five Hour Energy. A couple of top 20 teams in the ACC, Miami and Clemson. A four-point difference in favor of the Tigers. Glad to have you back here with us. I'm Mike Cousins along with Corey Alexander. So four points, that's what separates these two. What's been the difference through 20 minutes? Well, the difference has been Miami getting, Miami getting out in transition. They've been great, but the offensive rebounding for Clemson has given them a bit of an advantage in this game. Jim Lanegger was concerned about that coming in, and Clemson has definitely flexed his muscles on the glass. Chris Likes, Dante Grantham, each with a game-high eight points. And Chris Likes coming in, giving Miami a spark once again. The ACC's reigning Rookie of the Week. Three for three from the field. Got off to a fast start for him. And Clemson did get off to a fast start, but they did knock down the three early. Gave the ball, and then that became the story for the Tigers in the first half. Six for 12 from beyond the arc at 50%. They're actually shooting better than they are from two. Only five for 16 inside the three, inside the three point line, but 50% beyond. A little bit of foul trouble first half for Miami. Bruce Brown had a pair, as did Lonnie Walker. And that's a tough offensive possession for Miami coming out of halftime. And I'm sure there was something that Jim Laranega wanted to accomplish there. But it's a team that had one assist to six turnovers in the first half, meaning that they're making trying to make individual plays, and yet... No sharing the basketball, but you see what sharing the basketball does for you on the opposing end by running your offense. Grantham hasn't missed from three yet. He's three for three from deep. He's got 11, and the Tigers equal their largest lead of the day. And the Tigers had seven first half turnovers, but no, that's their eighth assist on the game, so at least they are moving the basketball and running their offense on, on their end of the floor. And that's really the reason they have the lead because they've gotten quality shots in comparison to having to take hero shots. Turnovers were an issue for the Tigers on Thursday against NC State, especially with the pestering defense of the freshman LeVar Bats. Walker comes up big. Monty Walker just showing off his shooting touch. Missed a lot of the first half in foul trouble. But got off to a good offensive start on his own, knocking down his first two shots. So we'll see if he can stay on the court. Deep look from DeVoe. Whoa, stepping into it. Three for six from deep. Ewell sends it for Lawrence. A three-point reciprocation for the junior from Florida. And you like that shot because it was created by Huell attacking the paint and then giving up the ball to a shooter wide open. Amp Lawrence capable of knocking down the three, but it wasn't just one individual trying to make a play against five defenders. Thomas spins, scores, left block. That's a nice move by Eli Thomas on the block there. Showing off the spin. And we got some offense breaking out between these two good defensive teams. We had stretches in the first half, but to start the second half, they're both firing on all cylinders on the offensive end of the floor.
coming into this game you thought it might be first to say 55 but it looks like we're going to be on pace for a little bit more than that well yeah miami not used to giving up 60 so therefore you know they were going to bring the defensive energy whether clemson could match it or not was the question but on the offensive end of the floor shelton mitchell finding elijah thomas and the beautiful spin and back to the left hand to finish the bucket for Thomas as he gets off to a much better start here in the second half than the start of the game. The guy who's dedicated to changing his body the way he eats, the way he works out, has dropped a significant hey. amount of weight over the last three years. Huell goes over the back, first on the Miami big man. And you can see Jim Larinaga really trying to isolate Elijah Thomas at the top of the key to see if he can guard DeJuan Huell. Huell has the option to hand the basketball off or to attack but he's a little gimpy right now coming back on defense got to keep an eye on Huell to see if he can run it seems as though he's favoring that right foot DeVoe curls off for Thomas oh and he just missed it Lawrence got by Grantham. Three in front of the Miami bench doesn't fall for Walker, who's not been shy to shoot in the second. But that was a great offensive possession for Miami. Moving the basketball, attacking the paint, and then finding a more than capable three-point shooter. Walker unable to make, make that shot, but I know Jim Larinaga likes the way they share the basketball. Walker comes up with a steal. The big man Ibuka Izundu coming in at this whistle. No shot, and the foul is on the floor against Shelton Mitchell. First on Clemson's point guard. Jim Laranega in Miami trying to dig out of a touchdown hole. Today we remember the former ABC Sports announcer Keith Jackson who passed away at 89 years old. The first voice of Monday Night Football in 1970. Still just one of five to ever be the play-by-play -play announcer for Monday Night Football with ABC's Wide World of Sports. He went to 31 countries, saw 10 different Olympics, coined the nickname The Big House at the University of Michigan. We remember Keith Jackson Passed away at 89 years old. A guy who for generations, Corey, was the voice of, of football. And for me, a little bit too young to remember him that way. But I know for you and, and many people, he was the guy who when you turn on the TV, you knew that was a big game. And he had such a distinctive voice. And that's exactly right. His distinctive voice was so synonymous with big football games. And I'm going to act like, you know, because we're talking about Keith Jackson, I'm going to act like you didn't just call me old. But, you know, we're going to let that we're going to let that fly for right now because that's Keith's moment. It's all relative. Don't, don't think that I, don't, I didn't hear that shot you just took at me. But I did, it, I did it in a nice way. You did. You did. And it's interesting to think about, you know, for, for me as a younger guy, 28 years old, we live in a day and age now where there's there may never again be one signature voice of any sport because of how many games are televised in 2018. Yeah, and when you think, of course, as technology has taken upon, you know, what has happened with technology and sports, so many different games on, so many different platforms. But when you could just turn to a couple different channels and you saw Keith Jackson, you knew it was a big game on that day because they didn't they didn't just put them on any average games. It was big time. This one big for both of these teams. Looking to avoid ACC loss number two. Miami, two and one in the conference. They've only lost twice. Clemson has also only lost two times. Thursday against NC State. And the pre or the pre-ACC portion of their schedule against Temple. They're three and one in the league. Thomas, who just picked up his second foul, goes one-on-one, -on -one, walled up by Izundu. Nice pass for Reed, who's rejected by Brown. And then Reed is called for the foul. And that's one where Marquise Reed, of course, he's frustrated about the fact that he had to get the basketball back in a tough situation and try to get a shot off there at the end of the shot clock. Great defensive effort there by Bruce Brown. I'm not sure there if that was the right foul to take that. 
and Reed to pick up that foul because, of course, he's one of those guys. He played 40 minutes against NC State on Thursday. He doesn't come off the floor, and so he doesn't want to put himself in a position where he takes silly fouls and could possibly find himself in foul trouble. Lawrence in rhythm. Reed's got it in the corner. Team high, 34 minutes a game. Newton into Scara. Offensive foul on Jaquan Newton. Our first big Monday of the season on ESPN's a sonic blockbuster. Marvin Bagley, the third and number seven Duke, taking on these Miami Hurricanes, seven Eastern. And then a big game in the Big 12, number 12, Kansas, and second-ranked West Virginia in Morgantown. Both games available on the ESPN app. And Kansas's roster gets bolstered today. Silvio D'Souza finally declared eligible by the NCAA. And not just gets, got bolstered today. D'Souza actually had an opportunity to watch his first entrance into the Kansas lineup. He had a turnover on his first possession, but yet the team was happy to see him there. Newton flushes it, four-point game. And that was a big possession for Miami defensively to get Jaquan Newton going. He hasn't had much impact in this game offensively, and that's his strength. A young man that averaged over 13 and a half points per game last year is down all his offensive production this year, but Jim Laranaga needs for him to have an impact on the game on both ends of the floor. Their only senior scholarship player. A drought of more than three minutes for the Tigers. And it continues on the miss by DeVoe. And this is where Miami's dangerous. Whoever rebounds it can push it, and it often turns into a good shot in transition. Izundu, he got hit. The junior from Nigeria will go to the line and shoot just his 17th and 18th free throws of the year. But by Lonnie Walker coming up with that rebound and pushing it out in transition, four different Hurricanes touch the basketball in that possession. And it's a quality offensive possession getting Azundu to the free throw line. Of course, he has to take advantage of the opportunity. But when you see Miami share the basketball that way, that was, that's what makes them so dangerous. I'm looking at this Miami lineup on the floor right here, and I think a little bit about Virginia Tech because they're a team that doesn't have a lumbering forward on the roster and how to match up with that type of a lineup, especially now go back to what Clemson has to do here to try and keep up pace with the Hurricanes. But the difference in Miami compared to a Virginia Tech is you have a Dewan Hewell and you also have a Booker Zumbi. Virginia Tech doesn't have that size to be able to carry. Blackshear has had a strong year so far, but they don't have that size to be able to keep a big on the floor all the time. And I mean, Hewell's a pro. So, I mean, when you've got a guy like that at six foot eleven out there that can do the things that he does, that makes them even more special. Walker well guarded off the screen. Oh, my goodness! Right to the rim, a right-handed jam. Corey, that came out of nowhere. Nowhere for who? You remember at the beginning of the game when I talked about his athletic ability, and his, what he likes to do normally on the fast break, but this time in traffic, Lonnie Walker going up over Amir Sims for the finish. It doesn't matter who's in his way. Lonnie Walker still capable of finishing. Well, everyone here from Miami enjoying the highlight from Lonnie Walker the fourth, but none more than Dad, Lonnie Walker the third on the left, getting an opportunity to check his son out today here at Clemson. And young Lonnie giving Dad a nice little highlight for making the trip down. And of course, when you get an opportunity to watch your son play, who wouldn't want to see something like this? Lonnie Walker putting on the show. His teammate, his bench, loving it. I'm sure dad loving it even more. McDonald's All-American number 13 in the ESPN 100 last year out of Reading, Pennsylvania. A picture of Lonnie Walker hangs in every public school in Reading along with a letter that he wrote to the city to thank them 
for his experience growing up there. He dishes for likes, and the little man scores big Great to tie smile. the game at 42. And again, sharing the basketball. Miami only had one assist in the first half. Four already here in the second half. So the sharing the basketball has helped the Hurricanes even this game at 42. Last five minutes, the Tigers, four turnovers, no points. But that drought ends as Mitchell's floater gives them the lead. And Shelton Mitchell as the point guard, of course, his job is to set this team up. But he has to be more aggressive attacking the rim and scoring for this team. Averaging double figures, over 11 points per game. But has to become more of an offensive-minded player at times because he's the guy that, that the opposing teams are often helping off of. He can't be a liability on the offensive end of the floor. Thomas with the block, Lawrence at three. Izundu sets a fresh 30. Walker, whoa. See, for, for many, when you see Lonnie Walker make plays like this, it's exciting. And not to say that it's not exciting for me, but we got an opportunity to see his dad again. It's nothing new for people who have seen Lonnie Walker walk through the air and make plays that honestly at times you would think are humanly impossible but he does it on regularity i mentioned that letter that he wrote to the city of reading and he talked to the kids there and he said to all the young kids who've doubted themselves just continue to work on your skill whether it's basketball art chemistry education is key focus on academics and how you use your time are you going to spend your time wasting your potential the choice is yours be true to yourself because anything is possible. That's in every school in Reading, Pennsylvania, all the public schools. That guy is an inspiration for a lot of kids. He really is, and a very intelligent young man. Actually, you know, we, you mentioned him in the McDonald's All-American games. He won the state championship the night before, got up at 4 a.m. to get on a plane to fly to the McDonald's game. So he was, he was off a little bit as far as his timing the entire week, but still was able to get out and put on a show when it was time to get on the court. Weak side tip, Lawrence going to the free throw line. 11.34 to go. Lonnie Walker, he's a baller, but he said growing up, he was usually the one watching the Discovery Channel. He calls himself a nerd and a geek, but he's a superstar with dad enjoying the show. My cousins, Corey Alexander, glad you're with us here from Clemson. A great game between Miami and Clemson. 11.30 to play. ACC Big 12 Monday night. In your opinion, which is the better league? I mean, do you, do you remember who you're asking? <laughs> yes, Virginia standout Corey Alexander. I, I, I am under the impression that the ACC is the best league every year. And the reason I say that is because, one, you have 15 teams going out there, and regardless as to whether or not those teams are at their best, you have so many different styles. You had Jim Laranega talk to us about how they have to prepare because they just played against a trapping style as we see Clemson getting the job done defensively. Wow, Scarra and Donnell. Coming up big right in front of the student section. But that's it. You have to play against so many defensive styles in the ACC. Clemson packs it in and defends the rim. Florida State goes at you 94 feet. Virginia flat out locks you down. In my opinion, the ACC is the best league in the country because you have so many different levels of teams and styles of play that you always have to contend against. Three to shoot. Likes from deep. Had to pull it. And that gets swatted out of bounds by Miami. And if you want it, an objective measure right now as far as bracketology goes, Joe Lenardi as of this afternoon has nine teams from the ACC in with Virginia Tech among the next four out and the Big 12 with seven of the league's ten teams in the NCAA tournament. And I tell you this, and, and, and I really do, I love Trey Young. I think he's a great basketball player. What he's doing this year is tremendous. Do you, in your unbiased opinion, as Donnell knocks down the three ball to give Clemson the three-point lead, do you think that Trey Young will put up those type of numbers in the ACC? No. Okay. 
So th th we're, we're in agreement on that one. And that's really the reason why I think that this league is better. Marvin Bagley might average 50 in the Big 12. <laughs> Nine three-pointers already today for Clemson. That's the most allowed this year by Miami. Third best three-point defensive team in the country coming into play today. Walker had it, lost it. The Tigers with a chance to grow their lead. Mike, I would be remiss not to mention how much of an impact this crowd is having in this game today. A great crowd on hand here at Little John. I mentioned the first half. When I was in college, eons ago, Little John Coliseum was one of the toughest places to play. And with the success of this team this year and the way they played, you can see the excitement is back here. Hot hand! Whoa! Donnell, a couple triples. Time out, Miami. Donnell had made six threes going into Thursday's game and now in the last game and change he's made three of them and we've seen him come in and spell Eli Thomas and have big moments but here on this home court in a game that Clemson needs I mean of course right now it's too early to say that there are must wins in the ACC but when you look at what Clemson has coming up in their schedule this is a game that they, I'm sure they have circled that is important for them to get because they have a very tough stretch coming. They'd allowed eight three-pointers made against them on three separate occasions. None of those were losses. The two times they've lost this year, they've shot under 40%. And right now the Hurricanes are at 36 on the game. Well, Miami is third nationally in three-point field goal percentage defense. They give up 27% or less. And, and actually held Florida State to five to 24 from beyond the arc in their last game. So they're not used to seeing these type of three-point numbers go up against them. Walker goes window to try and help quiet the crowd. He's got 13 for the Kings. And this is the area right now. If you're Clemson, you've got to be very careful as to who is bringing the basketball to the floor. If whoever Chris likes is guarding, you want to go to the opposing guard to allow them to be able to handle it because he can be a one-man press on his own. Tonight at 6 over on ESPN, we'll take you to the Joyce Center in South Bend. We'll take you to the snowy cold so you don't have to go there yourself as the North Carolina Tar Heels visit the Notre Dame Fighting Irish who are still probably a game away from getting Matt Farrell, their point guard, back on the floor, out with that sprained ankle, which has been immensely frustrating for him. I'm sure it has. I was actually in South Bend. The game that he rolled his ankle, it was also the game that Mike Bray surpassed Digger Phelps as the all-time winningest coach in Notre Dame history. Digger handing the basketball off to Mike Bray, and you're talking about it. Mike Bray, a fabulous coach going into Syracuse last week while we were there and getting a win against the Orange without Bonzi Colson, of course, and without Matt Farrell. And Syracuse right now in the battle at Florida State trying to come up with an ACC win for their own. Walker wants to take it. Brown from the weak side has two defenders on him. They send it back out. Mike, it was Clemson in the first half all over the offensive boards. Miami has shown its muscle here in the second half, continuing to get second chance opportunities. Walker. Just about everybody on that Miami bench thought that was going in. Although, to be fair, I don't think there are many times he shoots, and they don't believe that to be the case. 
Donnell, can he do it again? Newton drives, kicks for likes. Traveling. 7.58 to go, a charged up Little John. The Saturday spectacular on its hands. This is Stephen Fleming, one of the managers for the Clemson basketball team. He's not just a manager, though. He's part of a program called Clemson Life. Learning is for everyone. It's a post-secondary educational option for students with intellectual disabilities here at Clemson. Their schedule includes academics, time management, finance, job skills, apartment skills, and the athletic department has been a big partner with Clemson Life and a big part of the initiative from University President Jim Clements as well. And our colleague Debbie Antonelli, her son Frankie, is a manager for the women's team. And it's a, a great program for students with intellectual disabilities to be a part of campus life just like any other student. It has, and you know, getting an opportunity to talk to Debbie about it, it's something that she just glows about, getting an opportunity to talk about Frankie and what the Clemson Life program has done for him. And just amazing, Audra, well, I, I call her Audra Oliver, but she's not actually Oliver. <laughs> but the head women's coaches, Frankie's with her. And so when you look at that, now you're talking about, you know, having these young people with the opportunity to be involved with athletes that they grow up loving so much and feeling as though they're a part of it and which they truly are a part of the team. Soft touch, Dante Grantham, 54-46, seven minutes to go. waiting for the right look. Lawrence in the corner gives it up. And Walker with a contested three. Second chance. Amp has the energy and two points. And that's now the 11th offensive rebound of the second half for Miami. And I know Brad Brownell had to have had a conversation with his team in the huddle in the last possession. They've got to find a way to keep Miami off the glass. That's really been the saving grace for the Hurricanes here in the second half. Grantham blows back and scores! Nice move by Amp Lawrence there. And when you look at these matchups, there are very few teams especially in the ACC that can match the ability of Dante Grantham to put the basketball on the floor but Miami is one of those teams that can because Amp Lawrence really is another one of those guys who played point guard in high school and now playing at the four position but he's capable of rebounding pushing the basketball and making plays out on the floor speaking of making plays Grantham going baseline and the finish to excite the crowd here at Little John for his 15th point of the afternoon. The whistle against Miami's Bruce Brown, his third foul. Ian Walker with three. Lawrence leads the break, the reach in on Grantham. You know, as we see the game evolve, you have guys like Grantham, like Anthony Lawrence, guys who are really guards and just in bigger bodies, but with the ability to put the basketball on the floor, make plays for themselves and their teammates. And we've seen that at both ends of the floor here over the last couple possessions. We've seen Grantham with a nice dunk, but Amp Lawrence has come up with the offensive rebound put back and a nice drive and finish and the opportunity at the free throw line to score six straight points for the Hurricanes. At the stripe here, 67% free throw shooter. And it's been great recruiting for Miami. Jim Laranega now in year number seven. To be able to find guys like that who work well within the confines of exactly what he wants to do. First foul on Likes. And the 16 foul. We talked with Jim Laranega earlier today, and he mentioned not just his battles with Brad Brownell, 
here in the ACC as Brownell's in his eighth season at Clemson and Jim Laranega in his seventh season at Miami. But these two guys go back to the CAA days when Coach Laranega was the head coach at George Mason, Brad Brownell at UNC Wilmington. And he basically said, you know, back then we probably had one or two offensive options. Now everybody on the court can score, <laughs> but they used to have some big time defensive battles. Scores maybe in the 30s or 40s rather than heading toward the 60s or 70s. Larinaga today, this is the 76th game in his tenure in just seven years that they played as a ranked team. And you go the previous 63 years, they had 76 games as a top 25 team. That goes back to the beginning of the pole era in 1948. Well, now remember, Miami did not have basketball for a That's while. Right. They, they, they had they, a long layoff without basketball from 71 to 85. Lawrence, no, Hewell with the follow, got it. And interestingly enough, the second winning is coaching in of history, Bill Foster, is the guy who brought Miami basketball back in 85 holding tryouts out on a patio to get things started. And even more interesting than that, well, hard to be more interesting than the patio. <laughs> I'll say that. But Leonard Hamilton has actually been, was the, eight, the Big East Coach of the Year at Miami. And now the all-time winningest coach at Florida State. So you got talking about a number of great coaches that have been in that Miami system. DeVoe trying to create space. Shot clock violation. Yes, Leonard Hamilton one of the most entertaining people to talk to in college basketball in the ACC's ageless wonder. <laughs> Absolutely. When you think of the places that Coach Ham has actually been. Including with the Wizards. Uh, with the Wizards, but you go all the way back to actually assistant coach for Joby Hall at the University of Kentucky. Jim Laranega was on the bench with Terry Holland at the University of Virginia. Actually was in the Final Four twice as an assistant coach before he made the historic run with George Mason taking them to the Final Four in 2006. Hurricanes down four, Brown challenge. Another offensive rebound, and that really, the fans even here are now starting to see the trend that's been happening in the second half. Walker feeling good as he steps back and delivers two more. He has 15. You know, Mike, you and I talked with Coach Laranega before the game, and we mentioned the lineups. This is a different lineup than finished the game against Florida State in a win for them last Sunday. DJ Vasilovich was on the floor then, but you notice no Jaquan Newton once again in this lineup as Coach Laranega likes to go with the hot hand. It's Lonnie Walker going to be on the court. And he, has, and he talks about guys that earn the minutes during the game, get them at the end, the hand that he can trust. Oh, Fuel follows the miss by Walker. Miami picking up the pressure in the full court now. Putting a little bit, it was more of a token pressure on Clemson right there, seeing if they could get Clemson to come up with the costly turnover. But you see, with Chris Likes guarding Shelton Mitchell and the ability that Likes puts on the basketball defensively, Brad Brownell opting to go with Marquise Reed to handle the ball in the full court, honestly taking Clemson out of what might be their offensive sets. A coaching chess match. Early ACC schedule. Two points separates Miami and Clemson. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by 5-Hour Energy Shots. Get back to 100%. And in part by Degree Deodorant. It won't let you down. Two top 20 teams coming down to the wire here at Little John Coliseum, 2-16 to play. Clemson with a quick turnaround after Thursday's game against NC State with the lead. And Miami shooting just over 40% in the second half, but 14 offensive rebounds for 14 second chance points has been the difference maker for the Hurricanes here in half number two. 
as we look at overall just one offensive rebound in the first half, 14 second half, offensive rebounds, and I'm sure Brad Brownell had to implore his guys to keep a body on someone on the other end of the floor when a shot goes up. They have to be able to come up with a defensive board. It's the junior from Maryland, Marquise Reed at the free throw line, getting the first. And Marquise Reed, a fabulous free throw shooter. He's one of those guys you can normally put two in the book whenever he gets there. He doesn't even, he doesn't even succumb to the announcer jinx. He's that cool at the free throw line. 88% career free throw shooter. Walker's getting a touch every time down the floor. Well, Jim Laranega is going to the matchup that he likes the most, and that's Lonnie Walker versus Gabe DeVoe. And seeing if Lonnie Walker can make things happen, finding his way to the rim. David Scar actually on the floor for Clemson in that possession because of his defensive prowess, but offensively they're coming back with Shelton Mitchell to handle the basketball. Offensive board, Walker rises, rejected, and will return to the line. And Mike, this is just one of those scenarios that when it rains and pours, because now I'm sure the offensive rebounding is at the forefront of the mind of the Clemson players, but now the ball just doesn't bounce your way because you've allowed it to go so long, and you see the way that Miami is making the effort to attack the offensive glass anytime a shot goes up. It's a it range and poor scenario for Clemson, but they have to stick with it and just find a way to keep those guys off the glass, but it's not going to be just one person. It's got to be all five Clemson defenders keeping them off the board. Walker's dad feeling the pressure. Eleven of Walker's 16 points have come in the second half. Did you see the pressure once again forcing someone else to handle the basketball? That's why it's a luxury to have a guy like Dante Grantham who actually played the point guard position in high school. And of course, as I talk him up, Amp Lawrence almost comes away with the steal. But Chris Likes is that good defensively, and Brad Brownell has that level of respect for Likes that he's not putting the ball in the hands of Shelton Mitchell to have to bring it up 94 feet against Likes. Mitchell a drive and kick. Reed launches. Hits a major three. Clemson Tigers Marquise Reed finding Dante Grantham in the corner for the big three consecutive three-point baskets made by Reed off of a beautiful find from Shelton Mitchell and the 12 three-pointers from Clemson are a season high as they needed them all here against a defensive minded Miami squad Clemson just took its first loss in league play on Thursday night. They can pull even with Virginia in the win column for at least a day. 
Miami with a loss would go to two and two. Hurricanes basketball, 56 seconds. They clear out the lane for Brown to drive it. Huell, the last one to touch it. Jim Laranega, Dewan Huell, both want the officials to review that under two minutes and check it. But one thing you do see, Elijah Thomas does a great job of getting over there and getting a hand on the basketball. I'm not sure if there will be more than enough evidence as both players have a hand on the ball. But it does look as though Huell's hand is the last one on there. It'd be hard to say there's enough evidence to reverse that. I believe this basketball will stay in possession of Clemson. The officials would need indisputable video evidence to overturn the call on the floor. And with those two looks, I'm with you. I think Hewell was the last to touch it. Should be Clemson basketball. If it, even if he wasn't, I can't see enough evidence there to say that Thomas did touch it to have enough evidence to overturn that call. That's almost like a great defensive play by a defensive back to break up a pass and not allow Huell to be able to gain possession of that. Thomas coming in and just affecting that basketball will get possession back for Clemson. After the video review, Clemson does keep it, so Miami's got to defend here. What's the strategy you talk like with the Hurricanes? Well, with the being a nine-point game right now coming out for Miami, I would expect for them to go with some 94-foot pressure. And if they don't get a steal early in the play, just a foul and try to extend this game because they're down now three possessions. That's saying you have to make three threes. So you're going to need a lot of time. 46.9 is more than enough time, but you've got to play the right way and bank on Clemson missing some free throws. Quick inbounds to Reed, the 84% free throw shooter. Will walk about 84 feet to the opposite end. Reed, the team's leading scorer on the year at 16 points a game. 10 points today. Seven unanswered for Clemson, which here at crunch time has found its largest lead of the afternoon. Eight straight. Time and score against Miami. And right now, if you're Clemson, you can concede the two-point basket. Just don't give up the three. Likes tries a three. And Huell stops the clock with a foul. The crowd sensing victory may be imminent. Tonight, 11 Eastern on ESPN. Full breakdown of Raptors Warriors with Toronto trying to beat both NBA Finals teams in back-to-back -back games. Plus, a look at how Trey Young had a huge game today against TCU. And all the key plays from today's action, a double dip of NFL playoffs. Falcons, Eagles, Titans, Pats, Sports Center, 11 Eastern, ESPN, and the ESPN app. Now, promo show 39 and 14, the first time that they played against each other. 43 tonight, so it's, he can basically say, yeah, I average 41 a game versus a particular team in Big 12 play. And a good one at that. I'm sure he's hoping they play each other in the Big 12 tournament. Likes, three-pointer, 70 to 60, 25 seconds and counting. Foul is right away. Mentioned the importance of this game for Clemson. And although it wasn't a must win, why it was so important, the Tigers 
If they get a win here at home, they have to go to North Carolina. We all know the story on Clemson and North Carolina. They've never won in North Carolina in 50-plus years of playing against each other. They have Notre Dame back at home. Then they have the trip to Virginia and at Georgia Tech. So the schedule gets even tougher as though the schedule's not always tough in the ACC, but it gets pretty tough for Clemson coming up. And, of course, Duke coming into Coral Gables for Miami on Monday, so a quick turnaround for the Hurricanes to try to recover from their performance here tonight. Likes hunting a quick shot, Lawrence corner. Timeout Miami, Jim Laranega uses his last one. The Hurricanes encroach within nine once again. Already earlier today, Duke of the win against Wake Forest. BC going out of conference for the last time. They won by 14 against Dartmouth. Georgia Tech had a win against Pittsburgh and Syracuse and Florida State with a double overtime. Florida State needs that one, one and three in the ACC to start. Those are the type of games you want to play in. Everybody got their numbers today. When you're talking 100 points played in a college basketball game, everyone had a good offensive night. A little bit closer than they would have wanted, especially with Terrence Mann, their leading scorer, out today. So that was a blow for the number 23 Seminoles and then North Carolina at Notre Dame tonight. Those were the next two teams having to go to the Dean Dome for the Tigers. And you go down there and you say, hey, Virginia, you know it's going to be tough defensively. Georgia Tech is going to be no walk in the park either because as we talked about on Thursday night, road teams in the ACC, with the exception of two wins at Pittsburgh, were 5-21. and 21. It's just hard to do. And Georgia Tech already has wins over Miami and Notre Dame at McCamish Pavilion. So Georgia Tech is a different team when they're playing at home. A tough start to the year, but definitely no easy win trying to go into McCamish and knock off the Yellow Jack. They're 3-1 and one in the league now and the best defensive efficiency in the league. Mitchell into the front court. The Tigers, after a heartbreaking defeat Thursday night in Raleigh, get it back. 15 and 2, 4 and 1 in the league for Brad Brownell and the Tigers, number 19 in the country, and looking to rise with a new poll on Monday. Exciting game here by two really good teams. The ACC is in great shape with this level of competition. Grantham. The game high, 18. So for our entire crew, my partner Corey Alexander, my cousin saying so long, we take you to College Basketball Live, Hoop Scoop.